This is Every Creature Commission Television. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is David Griffiths welcoming you to another On Fire Constitution Keepers. You know, these are amazing days in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Word of God, not to be prayed about, is the title of our program today. We must never pray about the Word. The Word is not to be prayed about. It is to be acted on. We are here today in the name of Jesus to act upon His Holy Word. The Holy Word of God, inspired by Him alone, through men, over eras, over generations, to bring us today the completed canon of Scripture, which is revealed to us by His Holy Spirit to fulfill the purposes of God. This ministry over the last few years has gone through battle after battle, torment after torment. But let me tell you this, the Word of God cannot be returned void. The Word of God is stable. It never changes. That is, unless you have one of these new translations which are forever changing through the Nestle Land Committee of the Vatican and Bible Societies. That is the counterfeit Word of God. The true Word of God is inspired of God to never change. And we, as the body of Christ, are called to be living epistles of his word so the word is not a dead piece of paper oh no the word of god is living because the word of god is a person the person of the lord jesus christ and through his body he reveals his will in the name of Jesus that whatever we shall bind is bound whatever we shall loose is loose for this is the body of Christ the church triumphant the living Word of God the revelation Word of God that through him we are more than conquerors we welcome you to on fire constitution keepers today this is David Griffiths saying good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is the Word of God being live streamed on every Creature Commission television. You know in the glorious constitution service of Her Majesty the Queen in Great Britain, this is what happened in June 1953, the Queen arising out of her chair, supported as before, the sword of state being carried before her, going to the altar, making her solemn oath in the sight of all the people to observe the premises, laying her right hand upon the Holy Gospel, in the great Bible, which was before carried in the procession and now brought from the altar by the archbishop, and tendered to her as she kneels upon the steps and saying these words, the things which I have here before promised, I will perform and keep, so help me God. And then the queen kisses the book and signs the oath and the queen having thus taken her oath returns again to her chair and the bible delivered to the dean of westminster and when the queen is again seated 
the Archbishop goes to her chair, and the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, receiving the Holy Bible from the Dean of Westminster, brings it to the Queen and presents it to her. The Archbishop saying these words, Our gracious Queen, to keep your majesty ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God as the rule for the whole life and government of the Christian princes, referring to Great Britain's government and its commonwealth. The whole life on government Christian princes, we present you with this book, the most valuable thing that this world affords. And the moderator of the Church of Scotland continues, here is wisdom. This is the royal law. These are the lively oracles of God. And it is from these oracles that we read today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have a battle team here in the studio of Lindsay Griffiths, Margaret Dransfield, and Marjorie Bynum. Not moved by what they see. Not moved by how they feel. But moved by the word of Almighty God. You know, there are those amongst us who lose houses, homes, family for the sake of the gospel. It is these people who are promoted to the high places of God to move in his glory, power, might, and dominion to such a degree that God's glory forever falls upon them. And yet the world cannot understand these beings of the lively oracles of God because the true body himself becomes as those lively oracles, becomes a living fountain of life, becomes so entrenched in this word that the word is revealed, spoken in a prophetic manner to God's glory. And we read from the scripture about the perilous times to come. And we read from the scripture that these indeed are days of Elijah, of the Elijah spirit being the forerunner to the second coming of the Lord as it was as a forerunner before his first coming. And that as we come to the letter to Timothy, the second letter, chapter 3, we read the declaration that is so great and so powerful and so awesome that Paul declared to Timothy in verse 15 of chapter 3 that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And this is the word that needs to be understood today, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And as I bend down here and pick up a book which is satanic in origin, this is the Nestle Land edition. The 25th edition, which is the underlying Greek from the Alexandrian scriptures to the new translations. And an admission is here given by those of this committee as follows. It says, the following an agreement between the Vatican and Bible societies. It has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. Let me tell you this, there's no such thing as a revision of the Word of God. It is impossible to revise the Word of God. 
So when we hear of the revised standard version, when we hear of the revised version of 81, this is not the word of Almighty God. For it is impossible to change his word. It is impossible to embrace a word that has verses taken out and put in and has false doctrines questioning the deity of Christ at its very root. For to embrace such a document is to embrace a curse and a plague upon your life which is the root of the new translations. They are there not to build you up, but to kill you, to destroy you, and to put you into a play for the rest of your life. And if you embrace these things to an eternity in hell, says here that this marks significant step with regard to interconfessional relationships should naturally be understood that this text is a working text in the sense of the century-long Nestle tradition. How can the word of God be worked upon? This word I have before you came about through the prayer of Tyndale, who gave his life so that the king would authorize the Texas Receptus from Antioch, so that we may have a word that is truly inspired and written of God. That from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, not a working committee looking to continuously revise what God has written. Such a concept is of Lucifer and of Lucifer alone. All scripture doesn't mean some scripture doesn't mean part of scripture it means all scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness why that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto good works that the man of God be perfect Thoroughly, I say it again, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Smith Wigglesworth said on August the 23rd, 1922, we have this morning one of those high watermarks of very deep things of God in the Spirit. I believe the Lord will reveal to us these truths as our hearts are open and responsive to the Spirit's leadings. But let not any man think he shall receive anything on the Lord, only on the lines of a spiritual revelation. For as there is nothing that will profit you or bring you to a place of blessing except that which denounces or brings the death the natural order. So Smith Wigglesworth is preaching a death of human comprehension before we can be led of the Spirit to understand his word. The Lord of hosts camps around us this morning, declared Smith Wigglesworth. As this Lord of hosts comes around us this afternoon from the Brindley Studios in Rosan Sea. And this camping brings about songs of deliverance that we may see face to face the glories of His grace in a new way. For God hath not brought us into cunningly devised fables. But in these days, he's a rolling away the mists and the clouds. 
You know, there are those who live in a bubble, a figment of their own imagination, a fantasy world, thinking that all comes through revelation of the Spirit without having lived the death life, without having lived the crucified with Christ life without having denounced the things of this world, without having denounced the protection of earthly treasures, we have a treasure within us which is so much greater than the physical realm. We have the treasure within us which is the treasure of God, the glory of God, the might of God. And as Smith Wigglesworth intimated all those years in 1922, God is rolling away the mists and the clouds and every difficulty that we may understand the mind and the will of God. And if we are going to catch the best of God, Smith Wigglesworth declared, there must be in this meeting an open spiritual desire an open ear and an understanding heart, that the veil must be lifted. We must see the Lord in that perfectness of being glorified in the midst of us. And as we enter into these things of the Spirit, we must clearly see that we are not going to be able to understand these mysteries that God is unfolding to us only on the lines of being filled with the Spirit. It takes much more. It takes a dedicated life of study in the Word of God. The Word of God is not to be prayed about. It is to be embraced in our study. Even when these special meetings close, the pastor and everybody else will find that we must all give the time to grow in grace. We must see that God has nothing for us on the old lines. The new plan, the new revelation, the new victories are before us. You know, many of the charismatics, as they call themselves today, think that they can live their lives on spiritual experience, not a bit of it. It is lived through devotion to study in the word of Almighty God. And as we study his word, so his spirit reveals his will, so that inner witness increases. So the understanding and application of his word becomes fully understood, not by spiritual experience primarily, but having initially studied the word of Almighty God and its entirety, so that the Spirit of God may gain that which we have studied, so that he may fulfill his will. All carnal things and enal powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places, continued Smith Wigglesworth, must be dethroned. Now I am excited at this time as we come into the month of March 2016, that there are those here amongst us who are losing houses, homes, families, for the sake of the gospel. For that is the basis of the hundredfold and the hundredfold blessing. With all the pressures we've been under, Lindsay and I are losing a home. A process goes ahead in Roson Sea, and we are rejoicing over that. You know, the word is clear not to hold on to earthly things which can only be destroyed over the period of time. But we have a heavenly treasure, one which can never be destroyed, one of which the gates of hell cannot prevail against. 
that this treasure is not made with hands, but comes from Almighty God himself. And as Margaret Dransfield leaves her home to come and join the Brinley team of rejoicing at the Bible College of Wales continuing. So that word is going to continue to come forth. So the fire of the Spirit is going to continue to come forth. So God's glory is going to continue to come forth. And the word we had years ago was to remove thy stuff so that the earthly treasure can be taken away, so the heavenly treasure can manifest within our hearts. Wigglesworth declared, let us turn to the word which is so beautiful and so expressive in so many ways, quoting from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you? Or letters of commendations from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts. Can you even comprehend it? That we are the epistle of God written in our hearts, known of read of all men, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ. Are you a letter of God today? Are you his epistle today? For an epistle of God is one who is a disciple of God, a student of God, continuously devouring and accepting his almighty word, which has come from his very throne room. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink. So we are learning today, <laughs> hallelujah, can you receive this? That the word of almighty God is not written with ink. The word of almighty God is entrenched on the heart of the believer. That as the body of Christ, we are the body of the word. Living epistles, moving in power, glory and might having always been here, that we are a continuation of that which has gone before, that the very word that created heaven and earth is alive in the epistles of God. And these are living stones, living epistles, that we are the body of Christ, we are the word of God, and let no man change that. Written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. What kind of word is this, Marjorie? What kind of word is this, Margaret? What, car, what, what, what kind of word is this, Lindsay? What kind of word is this viewer at home? This is the word of Almighty God. Not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to God ward. Wigglesworth continued. I want this morning to dwell upon these words for a short time. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ. And as you receive this into your spirit, that means in same manner, 
are the manifestations of these fleshy tables of the heart. That as he laid hands on the sick, so we do likewise. As the anointing poured out of his body to the woman with the issue of blood, so do we do likewise. And greater things than these, declared God. Because the Son has been glorified. And that the enemy of souls has been defeated through the cross of Calvary. And that we bear within us those scars, but not only that. Those scars has been risen up in his glory. And as he has been risen up, we have been risen up also into being the manifestation of the sun on this earth. Hence, we are the branches connected to the vine. That as this glory manifests through those who take his word literally, not moved by what we see, not moved by how we feel, but moved by an inner witness so great that this is the glory of the Lord that can only come through his word. What an ideal position, declared Smith Wigglesworth, that now the sons of God those led by the Spirit of God are being manifested. Now the glory of God is being seen. Now the Word of God is becoming an expressed purpose in life till the life has ceased and the Word has begun to live in them. And so this process of curse of being crucified with Christ that our own feelings, our own ambitions, our own possessions, our own activities are put aside. How truly this position declared Smith Wigglesworth. was in the life of Paul. When he came to a climax, when he said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You know, there are those who try and soup up faith, but it's not our faith, it's his faith, because we have become the living epistle of God, moving by his faith, and not our own. Hence Habakkuk declares, the just shall live by his faith, that we are the living stones of God, crucified to self, yet there are those who profess to be Christians, who are still keeping one hand on the flesh line, rather than saying, Lord, I give you my all. How can Christ live in you, declared Smith Wigglesworth. There's no way for Christ to live in you. Only by the manifested word of Almighty God. Through you. Manifestly declaring every day. That you are, yes, you are, a living epistle of the Word of God. And there we are, as the living epistle of the Word of God, declared in the British Constitutional Act of the Coronation Oath, in the service which is around that oath, as the most valuable thing this world affords. Yet it has been government agency after government agency attack its very birthright. And with that comes a rebounding back on those who attack 
For the word of God can never be defeated. I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is his church but the living epistle of the body of Christ? Beloved, God would have us to see that no man is perfected or equipped on any lines only if the word of God abides in him. It is the living Christ, divine likeness to God, the express image of him. And the word is the only fact that works out in you and brings forth these glories of identification between you and Christ. It is the word of God dwelling in our hearts richly by faith. What a word. We may begin at Genesis. We might go through the Pentateuch and the other scriptures, be able to rehearse them. But without they are a living factor within us, they'll be a dead letter. Everything that comes to us must be quickened by the Spirit. For the letter killeth. We have many people come to us who are dead vessels who use the word as the letter rather than being the express manifestation of the living word of God. You know, as we come to John's Gospel, chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Such as it is today, as we minister and manifest the holy word of God, so the world cannot comprehend it. For it uses that of the tree of knowledge, of human comprehension, rather than spiritual revelation. That is why the true body isn't moved by feelings, isn't moved by reaction, but is moved only by the word of Almighty God. And as living epistles of God, we move in such glory, we move in such might, power, and, uh, and dominion, with the words as such of human comprehension cannot grasp these things. Peter declared in his second epistle, chapter 1, that given unto us are exceeding great and precious promises, that we might be the partakers of the divine nature, and that nature is a nature which comes only by the word of Almighty God that created the heavens and the earth. No wonder Jesus declared whatever we shall bind on earth, whatever we shall loose on earth, because within those who are the living epistles, there is the creative force to bring forth life that where there are no eyes, we in his name can create them. Where there are no legs, 
we in his name can create them. And we have witnessed such things as Smith Wigglesworth witnessed such things. How did he bring about the miracles of his ministry? Let me tell you this. It was not by prayer. Because the word of God is not to be prayed about. It was by manifestation of the creative force within him, which is the word of Almighty God, which is why the psalmist declared he sent his word and healed them. Oh, what revelation. What revelation. He sent his word and he healed them. Calling as his divine power. What a revelation, Marjorie. Are you a living epistle? Because the living epistle brings forth life and creative experiences which comes from the very God of Genesis. And without Genesis, there is no Bible. For without a beginning, there is no end. Are you simply relying on God in heaven in your prayer life? Rather than being the manifestation of his body on this earth. For the word of God it's not to be prayed about, but acted upon. Oh, brother and sister in Christ, has this been a revelation for you today? Given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature. Is this you today? You know as we grasp these things. And come to the first epistle of Peter. Chapter 1. As obedient children. Verse 14. Not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Those lusts look to come in moment by moment. Your passions look to take over from the anointing. But can we remain as that living epistle of God, full of his creative power and glory? It is written. Oh, isn't that significant? <laughs> <laughs> it is written. What significance is that? It is written. Is our victory over the enemy. Hallelujah. It is written. Be ye holy as I am holy. Peter goes on to declare in verse 5 of chapter 2 ye also as what? lively stones are built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ wherefore also it is contained where is it contained? in the scripture Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. A stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye also, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
a peculiar. Yes, because you are not of this world. You are dead to it. People. Why? That ye should show forth the praises. Father, we come in the name of Jesus today. Realizing the flesh life has to go. That we are crucified with Christ, yet we live. Yet not us, but him. And as we gain this understanding as an introduction to what your word is all about, we know it is not something of the Nestle Alan Committee that continuously changes and changes to suit the social conditions of the day. Your word never changes, that the God of Genesis is the God of today, and we are the manifestation of God on that earth which he created. So as we stand, having endured the hardship as a soldier of Christ, having had removed from us the treasures of this world, having moved on to a much higher place in his glory, having gone through a process of recognizing that the word is the living epistle, that we are those living epistles, that we are those lively stones. We then go forward in the treasure and power of the Spirit, strong in the Lord, as Paul wrote to the Ephesians in chapter 6. Strong in the power of his might having put on the armor of God, able to withstand the attack which has been against us constantly, 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 constantly through those who report us to government agencies because they see us as being peculiar. But that is the very word given to the monarch on the day of her coronation. That she too, like this nation, is called to be peculiar. Hallelujah. Politicians argue logically to their thinking. But we are a nation under God. Called to be a nation of the word. As the constitution declares. The most valuable book. This world of thoughts. Yet this book is not as is perceived in the natural senses. But it is a living epistle. This epistle, not being on tables of stone or on printed paper. But the manifestation of the sons of God. The true word, hallelujah, operating in resurrection power. We're able to withstand the attacks of the devil. They threatened that in 2010 that we be destroyed through official channels. Official channel after official channel after official channel. It looked impossible for this ministry to get through this year. I said to our trustees, it's impossible to get through this year. Financial year I'm talking about, which ends at the end of April. But we've had revelation we are going to get through. Attack after attack after attack has been saying no. But the word of Almighty God says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And they're all around us. They operated in Lucifer's protected families all over this world. Who are there to bring forward a false word. A word that continuously changes. The wealth of the world is continuously the same, yet they bring about recessions and boosts and 
change the financial world continuously, just as the Nestle Alain Committee changed its perspective, or how can I put it, perceived is a better word, perceived word. But the perceived word is not God's word. And court after court looks to convict on perception rather than the truth. But let me tell you, the truth is not a perception. The truth is a person, just as the word is a person. And the truth and the word are one person, Jesus Christ. And we are his body on this earth, never to be defeated. We stand, therefore, with our loins girt about with truth. We're open and transparent. It terrifies the enemy. We overcome him by the word of our testimony. We love not our lives until the end. We overcome him by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the Lamb. We have the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet shod with the preparation and the gospel of peace. And above all, we take this shield of faith, his faith. So you're able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Our mind is protected by the helmets of salvation. And what is the sword of the spirit? But the word. <laughs> Amen. There it is. <laughs> Amen. The word of Almighty God. You know, as we come forward, praising Him and giving Him glory, we know the victory has already been won. <laughs> and who is the body of Christ but His word, which declares it is finished? The victory is won. And who is the manifestation of his victory, of his resurrection? None other but us. And to conclude, as Paul again wrote to the Ephesians in chapter 5 this time, that we are sanctified and cleansed with the washing of water. What, by prayer? Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks the Lord. The word of God is not to be prayed about, it's to be acted upon. We are cleansed not by prayer, but the washing of water. By what? The word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? So that he might present unto himself a glorious church. How does this come? By the word of Almighty God. Not having spot or wrinkle. Any such thing that it should be holy without blemish. How does this come? By prayer or by the word? By the word. So that men should love their wives as their own body. But we are one in Christ Jesus. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. This dear wife of mine can be foisty, but I love her. God brought us together. How? By his word. We are members of his body, his flesh, and of his bones. What is his body? What is his flesh? What is his bones? But his word. For he is the word of almighty God. He is the living word. He is the bread of life. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church.
<laughs> We're here today in his glory. His might, his power, and his dominion. As Lindsay comes up to sing the God on the mountain. Lindsay, come forward. We're praising the Lord. We're giving him the praise. We're giving him the glory. Lindsay, we just come round the back there so viewers can see you. <laughs> she's, com she's coming. She's com <laughs> and I'm hoping she's got a uh, hymn she's of the God of the Mountain. It's fallen it, it's down. It's fallen down. The Praise the Lord. The preaching of the Word. You know, the preaching very powerful, of the Word. But the, the words flew from my but song. But as you live this life, are being sanctified and washed by the Word of God, so shall come forth His glory. That the God of the mountain and the God of the valley, for going through this path brings valleys as well as mountaintop experiences. That we have his glory. Hallelujah. Having been crucified, we are risen up together. Amen. In resurrection glory. Amen. Dear viewers and listeners, wasn't that a powerful word? And you see, this is what keeps us. As Smith Wigglesworth said, I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I f how I feel. I am moved by the word of Almighty God. And this is the theme of this song, God on the Mountain. Down in the valley of trials and temptations, that's when faith is really put to the test. For the God of the mountain, He's the God in the valley. God of the day, still God of the night. The God of the day, still God of the night. Not a wonderful song, dear viewers and listeners. He is our rock. He is the God of the day and the God of the night. Consider the sounds, dear viewers and listeners. The most wonderful part, the world, a most wonderful part of a wonderful book, the Word of God. Consider Psalm 23. This is all about that song. This is all about that song. 
when you go through the shadow, the, the valley story of the shadow of death, I am with thee, said the Lord. And his word is very, very wonderful word. Consider Psalm 19 and the longest of the Psalms, Psalm 119, they're both all about the word. I'm going to read you a couple of verses right now from Psalm 19 and continue after the next song some more verses this is what the word is like as David has just been preaching this word the law of the Lord this is Psalm 19 verse 7 is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. The world, the word. The word of God cleanses us, washes us clean. Verse 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. That is the beauty of God's Word, dear viewers and listeners. And when the Spirit and the Word come together, as Smith Wigglesworth prophesied all these years ago, then revival comes. And this is the theme of my next song. There is a river, the river of the Spirit. Oh 
You see, her life it was ruined and wasted, and her soul was bound for hell. Oh, but then she. by the word of God. Let all those cares and all those secret sins be washed by the word of God. It is his desire that we be pure and holy even as he is holy. He says that to us time and time again in his word. And you know especially he wants to see young people coming to him. This is his heart for the children and the young people to come to him. Because yesterday, you know, yesterday we were meeting for prayer. The ladies in this room are myself, Margaret, Marjorie, myself for prayer. And God said so clearly to all of us by his spirit, not only has he formed us, each one of us created us and knit us together in our mother's wombs, every one of us. You see that in the Psalms again in Psalm 139. You knit me together in my mother's womb for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. But he also has a calling for each one of us. You know he has a calling to become more and more like him to make that decision to let him work in us and through us to be washed and cleansed of all our sins every prophet that you read of in the word in Jeremiah 1 it talks about when I formed you before I formed you I knew you and I called you with this calling to be a prophet to the nations 
even in the New Testament. In Luke chapter 1, a wonderful chapter. Every word, every bit of the word is wonderful. This is a really wonderful chapter, full of miracles, full of signs and prophecies and amazing things. And the angel Gabriel comes, you know, and he says um, about John the Baptist will be born. And it says actually even before he was born, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit was upon him. It talks about when... Jesus' earthly mother, Mary, met her cousin Elizabeth, who was already about to produce shortly this child, this miracle son, John the Baptist, that the baby, the unborn child, John the Baptist, leapt in his mother's womb for joy, knowing that the Savior of the world was also conceived in Mary's womb. You know, this is an awesome thought, viewers and listeners, because where does that leave those who allow this thing, this sin, shedding the blood of the innocent, called abortion? Because every child that is conceived and born is created through God the Creator. And every child has a calling on his or her life right from the very beginning and even before God knows the plans that he has for us and if those children are killed before they're even born so are God's plans for each of these children so you know it is so so important for the children and the young people to hear the word of God and in Psalm 119, just to finish this section before I sing the next song, it says, Wherewithal, this is Psalm 119, verse 9, Wherewithal, which really means how, shall a young man cleanse his way? How or with which thing? How or what? Where? How? Shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed hereto according to thy word. You see, we have to be holy as he is holy to cleanse our ways and this is a word this is his word for the children and young people as well to take heed according to his word because it is no secret what God can and does do and always has done and will do it is no secret The chimes of time ring out the news Another day is through Someone slipped and fell Was that someone you? You may have longed for added strength And courage too Conquer you while God is on 
your side Just take him at his promise Don't run away and hide It is no secret You feel him calling to you now. He's reaching out to you with his loving arms. You know the song. It's not just a song actually. It's from scripture as well. Underneath are the everlasting arms. And the other scriptures, many, many scriptures. And many, many hymns tell of the rivers of life. The rivers of the Spirit. The rivers of the Spirit. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. A Welsh revival hymn. And it talks about how His love is underneath us. All around us flows the current of His life, His love. Leading onward, leading upward to our glorious rest above. You see, no matter what we go through, the trials and tribulations which will come our way. Because it says that all who live godly lives in Christ Jesus will suffer, not might suffer, will suffer persecution. And as David has shared with you earlier, we have suffered a lot of persecution. And so do millions of others every day. But even so, underneath are the everlasting arms. Remember the words that David spoke it's to be found in the book of Revelation. They overcame him, that is Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and that they did not love their lives unto the death. Because, dear viewers and listeners, the time is short. We are living in the last days. All the signs are there. And that's why we need to be Redeeming the time. No more messing about with God. No more blowing hot and cold and being generally lukewarm. That like Odyssean church was in the book of Revelation. The letters to the churches. The last letter that was written was the church at Laodicea. And this is so like the end time church. So much of it. There's been a great falling away. The church is lukewarm. And it said, I am about to you you out of my mouth that's what he said so we need to look with his perspective viewers and listeners God's perspective the eternal perspective because the time is short the time is very short and that's the theme dear viewers and listeners of the last song I'm going to sing to you today which is called the midnight cry for he comes at a time when we least expect it I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind
midnight cry We'll be going home When Jesus takes us On a cloud to call his children The dead in Christ shall be Hallelujah. Lindsay, these indeed are the end times. But we have reached almost the end of our program this week. But we are remembering the Lord. You know, Lindsay, if you come to sit down to my right side, you can come. There she goes. Back in just a few moments. You know, the Lord run a great victory over Satan. He was absolutely battered. He wasn't just beaten. He was beaten like no other being in the hall of history was ever beaten. In a rugby match, it would be millions and millions and millions of points against nil such as it is in football you just can't count the number of goals our Lord in comparison 
would have scored against Satan and his cohorts. The Bible's very, very clear. He made an open show of them. And that he hath in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, he hath delivered us from the power of darkness. He hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins and as I just come off screen just a few seconds I'm coming to bring a symbol of his very body broken for us as I take this wrapper off there is the bread produced by a prize winning baker in North Wales Tanland Bakery but that is not important what is important is what this bread symbolizes. It symbolizes his body broken for us. That as we partake and eat of this symbol, we thank the Lord for giving his life for us, which is the nature of the sacrificial walk of the Christian. We are called to be as he is. And as we have broken this bread, and as Lindsay passes this around to Marjorie and to Margaret, you too can join us in this celebration of the Lord's victory. Of Him crucified, but not only crucified, but risen again. And as you go to your larder, wherever it may be, just get a piece of bread. What is remarkable is that we remember what he achieved for us of his body broken for us. We made our choice. Let the people rejoice. And this is the symbol of our victory. Of his blood shed for us. How he died on the tree of Calvary. Lindsay, sit down. There's nothing to worry about. As he died on the tree of Calvary, he arose again. He arose in resurrection power. And that power he has given to his body, the manifestation of his word on this earth. And as I come off, just a moment, to get our glasses, as we share this remarkable moment of the celebration of the victory of Christ. Let us remember this. We are the church. The victorious army of the Lord. For we are the manifestation of the word of God. That we move in power, might and dominion. That we are his victory. And we give Jesus the praise. And we give him all the glory. And as I start pouring these glasses, we're remembering the Lord's death <clears throat> until he comes. That we thank the Lord for this victory. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise Him. And at home you can do the same. Join in with us this wonderful victory. Hallelujah.
Let us drink of this cup together. Remembering that it was through his stripes we were redeemed and healed 2,000 years ago. And we give thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light and that he is before all things and by him all things consist the living word the lively stones for by him were all things created that are in heaven in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. And we remember his death until he comes. But not only his death, we know that he rose again, that men and women can become as him all over this world, the manifestation of his word, the living epistles of God, we give him the praise and all the glory. Now as Lindsay comes forth, Lindsay come here. This dear wife we of mine. There we are, you just walk there. We've been through some amazing times over the years, Lindsay. And this is probably the most exciting time of our life as we move into the hundredfold blessings of God. And Marjorie and Margaret are here with us with Ines and Sheila as well in the high pastures home in North Wales. Father, we thank you that the victory is ours that that which is dead has been risen again in resurrection power that we are the body of Christ the church triumphant and so as the church we rejoice that we have overcome all the wiles of the devil in that he threatened us through a sinner in 2010 that we would be destroyed through official channels Yet to all the suffering and all the pains and the agonizing after agency after agency has come against us, coming to fulfill the aim of Lucifer to destroy the church. Yet the church triumphant is alive and well. Yet the church triumphant is glorious because we are the manifestation of His Word, the Word of God which goes forward with life and life in abundance. Jesus himself said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. So I invite you today to come to this Savior, this overcoming Savior, this glorious Savior, that only through him can ye be saved. Come to him today. This is us all, Marjorie, Margaret, Lindsay and I, saying goodbye right now. Thank you for joining us on On Fire Constitution Keepers, the body of Christ, the manifestation of the most valuable thing this world affords. I tell you this, it's only through the blood of Christ can we afford him. For he shed his blood that we may be the manifestation of him the word of God on this earth today from on fire constitution keepers God bless you email us we'll see you soon bless you Hi, God bless you dear viewers and listeners
It's all.